I will share my screen now. Can you see the screen, please? Yes, yes, yes. we can see. So, um, today I'm going to talk about natural language processing. And I didn't say for AI, but for policy text analytics. But I will put my talk in the framework of artificial intelligence. But I will be much more focused into natural language processing. Why do we do it? And uh, I will finish my talk with the example of the MESO project. Um, so where do we stand today? I'm starting really very globally. And the volume of data in 2021 is esteemed to be about 74 zettabytes. And it's been uh, assessed that the size of the data, the size of the digital universe is doubling in size every two years. So we are witnessing extremely uh, large quantities of data, uh, unprecedented uh, quantities of data. Why is that? Because we do have the number of users which is growing on the daily basis, but not only users. Users are using many devices, or uh, as I like to call them, different kinds of data generators. And uh, with all these different kinds of data generators, uh, we produce different kinds of data. As we see in the example, it can be text, it can be video, it can be images, it can be numerical data, sensor data, and so on and so forth. So we actually uh, generate huge quantities of data that are uh, really different in the nature for the analysis. Also, because of these huge quantities, the velocity, uh, velocity that new data is generated is huge. So we need a real-time capacity to process this kind of data, which leads us to the uh, key term, which is big data, and it means that uh, big data is uh, to be processed beyond standard, uh, beyond standard, uh, beyond standard processing cap capabilities. So now to modern analytics into the age of big data. Uh, Actually, with modern analytics, uh, we do try to analyze the outer world, the social world, the world of social media, of internet, of external data, which is not the data that we collected if in our internal information systems. And by doing so, uh, we do different kind of data analytics, either on social networks, where we know that we collect a lot of short messages, either of Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, uh, whatever social network it is. Uh, then we have a lot of uh, online uh, writing in online news, but also in blogs, a lot of multimedia video and images. And this all analytics is nowadays based on the use of artificial intelligence and maybe uh, data science, which is a kind of uh, intersected term with the artificial intelligence. And it is all enabled by big data processing. And my talk today is actually uh, how this modern analytical tool can help to inform policy making and maybe monitoring of some policy implementation. And uh, as I said, we do it uh, with the help of artificial intelligence. And I would like to debunk uh, this term. Artificial intelligence is not new. Uh, artificial intelligence has started in the 50s uh, by the most traditional way of I expert systems and rules uh, that map uh, cognitive processes uh, in the brain. Later in the 80s, uh, the quantity of da data was uh, higher. So different kind of machine learning principles, which 
actually mean that we learn different patterns or regularities in data from uh, large quantities uh, for large data at the input and the second name that can be applied to machine learning is statistical learning where we actually learn some kind of statistical models uh, from the data automatically. And recently, in last 10 years, uh, the subfield of machine learning uh, has arisen, and this is the deep learning. And uh, deep learning is what we face nowadays as the major breakthrough of artificial intelligence into the difference, uh, different aspects of uh, everyday living, as we saw also in the nice examples that uh, Colin provided in the plenary talk. So first, I would like to debunk what is deep learning. So deep learning or deep neural models are actually models that uh, deep means that they have many layers. And these layers are uh, mathematically simple components with a very complex organization. And how this complex organization will be put together uh, has raised many different architectures. I will not go into details, but here you, you can on the daily basis uh, find different architecture, which is kind of better improved and so on. But uh, take home message is that deep learning is actually a mathematical formalism, which uh, has a lot of parameters and these parameters in mathematical formulas on function, uh, uh, or functions uh, should be trained uh, with many calculations, which means that the deep data or uh, pardon, deep learning is now enabled by the huge quantity of data and by learning parameters from huge volume of data enabled on the really powerful hardware. So this is prerequisite if we want to go into deep learning. And now I will reflect to the field of the natural language processing of dealing with text, uh, how the field has developed in uh, recently in last two or three years. Uh, and uh, my uh, slide actually depicts the number of these parameters that are trained in the uh, deep learning models. So you can see that from the January till July uh, of 2020, we witnessed uh, more than exponential growth. And recently, uh, this growth uh, is even burger, uh, bigger because uh, Google Switch Transformer uh, is the size of 10 to the 12th uh, number of parameters. So uh, why I'm not, uh, take home message is not to remember this, but to uh, have the impression that deep learning is uh, growing better because we do have the more data. Actually, these models are uh, Google models, Google brain models are using all the available data that Google can index uh, on the web. And uh, then they train uh, extremely huge number of parameters. And these are the most successful models, but these models are beyond the reach of the government or beyond the reach of the local government or even the research company because arena for the players in this uh, field are actually left only for Facebook, Google and big companies. But still, there are a lot that can be reused by they, their works and uh, so some examples of successful using uh, of existing model is uh, already uh, existing. Now to the natural language processing and natural language processing, I would like to say that this natural language processing means that we automatically process the textual or unstructured data by the means of computer. And natural language processing comes at the intersection of linguistics and artificial intelligence. Because when we deal with text, we need to know something about linguistics. Uh, and uh, so uh, here I position NLP at the intersection. And from the perspective of different artificial intelligence technologies that I mentioned, natural language processing can use standard artificial intelligence, machine learning or deep learning. 
and from the perspective of task, uh, natural language processing is uh, very much interested in understanding uh, of the human language, which means that natural language understanding is a huge so, sub area of natural language processing. And the other one is natural language generation, where we try to generate uh, descriptions uh, from the data. And now back to text analytics. So uh, what I have explained is actually engine which is driving this text analytics. Uh, so at the uh, input we can have different web text, public text uh, or different kind uh, of textual data. And by means of uh, natural language processing, we search for values in this text. And then on the front end, we can uh, develop different uh, applications for uh, marketing, financial investment, drug discovery, or policy making. Uh, I will skip this one because probably I will be uh, too long if I go into details. But on this slide, I have listed different kinds of applications that can be used. And we already he uh, heard that chatbots uh, and virtual assistants are uh, really very much used. Also machine translation, also summarization, speech recognition, and so on. But I will not go into details because I would like to go into to the second part, which is actually uh, one use case that we have developed for uh, MESOC project. Uh, beside MESOC project, uh, we are also researching the infodemics in Croatia during the pandemics, where we deal with a lot of information spreading, uh, sentiment analysis, and analysis of the whole social media space uh, in Croatia. Besides that, we uh, do also research on the summarization and extraction and uh, semantic similarity of texts. So now to the MESOC project. So MESOC project uh, is measuring the social dimension of culture Actually, project is trying to, to assess the value and impacts of different cultural policies and practices. How this social value and impact creation uh, can be monitored or uh, can be put into the some level of maturity and uh, be useful to the policy makers. Uh, the core of the whole project is the MESOC matrix, where we actually organize 10 cultural domain according to the Eurostat classification into heritage archives, visual arts, and so on. And three crossover pillars of the structural model are coming from the new European agenda for culture, where we try to ass ass assess uh, these uh, impacts creation uh, to the health and well-being of the local people, to the urban and territorial renovation, and the people's engagement and participation. And in this project at input, we deal with text where we do have two types of documents, pilot studies and scientific studies, scientific papers. So here is uh, actually what I had uh, on the previous slide, uh, the whole metrics, where we try to analyze uh, text and the uh, output according to the taxonomy, according to the organization of the MESOC uh, domain uh, in this matrix, which uh, contains 30 cells. Uh, so we developed, uh, or we are developing, to, to be honest, MESOC Toolkit, which is a georeference visualization tool that enables also semantic search of the documents in the MESOC domain. Uh, it uh, has two types of documents, pilot studies and scientific. For now, we only deal with scientific papers and we are developing the pilot studies, studies in the different cities across Europe. And it can be visual uh, uh, in the MESOC matrix. So uh, MESOC toolkit can be also used as analytical, as 
text analytical tool that actually from the text uh, that you are writing to describe some cultural policy or initiative, you can upload it and your text can be then analyzed and some suggestions of transition variables or impacts according to description of your uh, policy uh, will be derived. And also uh, because uh, as we heard that the main drawback of artificial intelligence, one of the main drawback is uh, to be black box. Uh, we plan uh, plan to expand uh, this inference part uh, with ontology to shed some light how we derive uh, or how do we infer uh, suggested transition variables. And finally, tool is also semantic search tool, a semantic search tool where we can retrieve documents that are most similar to your, your uploaded document or more similar according to the set of variables that can be indicators of uh, your uh, policy or uh, process that you uh, want to implement. So now to the uh, visualization part. So here we have different uh, documents scattered around Europe. And by clicking on the tag, we can analyze uh, what's behind it. And always we start with the learning by natural language processing different kind of models from the textual data and then we develop some uh, bi dashboard or business intelligence dashboard that is actually capable of measuring social impacts and monitoring the transition process so when you upload the document document will be nested into uh, mesoc matrix uh, and some indication how uh, much of document is dedicated to each category of the MESOX uh, matrix uh, will be used to, as to assess which possible impacts and variables are inherent for uh, the uploaded document. Also, uh, similar documents can be retrieved which are similar according to the content uh, and this can be also contextualized by the content only in one category, which is relevant for your analysis, or it can be uh, maybe deeper by uh, analyzing the structure of the variables. And all of these uh, should be explainable, so, so should be linked to some uh, knowledge representation or ontology that explains how these automatic processes are uh, being inferred. So we used a lot of text classification, uh, automatic extraction and georeferences of location, a lot of content, uh, content analysis with keyword extraction and topic modeling, and finally also variable extraction. And uh, f uh, at the end of my talk, I would like also to say a few words about our other research, uh, which also includes complex network and language, uh, complex network, text mining, uh, development of uh, textual corpora, data analysis. And we also do research, a lot of research for the Croatian language. So uh, what can be maybe interesting is uh, automatic genre uh, di differentiation, who is the author of uh, and what is the language of uh, some text, text uh, then uh, how to extract uh, concepts and knowledge from Wikipedia, how to calculate sentiment on the Twitter data, and even more importantly, how to predict missing links and the spreading mechanism uh, on the data. And uh, we have also done some uh, analysis of scientometrical uh, or co-authorship networks. So this is the team mostly of my collaborators, PhD students and students. And over the years, uh, we had a lot of past members uh, that contributed to our research. So at the end, I would like to thank uh, you for your attention. And I hope that we have time for, uh, we have time uh, for uh, some questions.